Hello, welcome on Alt Control, Tatiana here. Last month, I had the opportunity to visit the most famous alternative control game exhibit in the world, the Alt Control GDC. I met all the Alt Control devs there and conducted interviews with them so I could make this video featuring every game at Alt Control GDC 2022 presented by their makers. But before that, let me quickly explain what's Alt Control GDC. Alt Control GDC is part of GDC. GDC stands for Game Developers Conference. It's one of the biggest annual conference for video game developers. It was originally organized by the American game designer Chris Crawford in 1988. Since 2005, the event is usually held at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. The Moscone Center has three halls, North, South and West. The West Hall hosts the talks and awards ceremony. On Monday and Tuesday, only this hall was opened as the rest was still being set up. The South and North Halls has the expo floor. They are connected. This part of GDC features all the commercial booths but also the Independent Games Festival Pavilion. IGF is a competition that's kind of like Sundance for video games. This year, some of my students were there to present their project Life Adventure and they won the Best Student Game Award. Alt Control GDC is part of the Game Developers Conference since 2014. It's a selection of 15 to 20 alternative control games curated by the game industry veteran John Paulson. For the past eight years, except for the COVID years when the event was online, the Alt Control GDC hosted some of the most famous Alt Control games out there. More than 60 games were selected for this one-of-a-kind event, including nine made by my students. Alt Control GDC used to be part of IGF, there was an IGF award for the best Alt Control game, but this year it was replaced with an audience award won by Pastry Paddock. And now, without further ado, let's hear the 15 Alt Control GDC 2022 game developers talk about their creation. Uh, so my name is Alex Hansen. Uh, I'm a games developer from Sheffield. So I built the game Morse, uh, which is a strategy game in which you're using timing, tactics and telecommunications to try and break the attrition of the Great War. So uh, the way the gameplay works is it's, it's broken down into two parts. So you have the telegraph key, which is the uh, your single input, which has 30 different outputs. And then you have the launch key, which um, once you've entered your coordinates, uh, you know, so for example, A1 or J6, uh, you then press the launch button and that allows you to call down artillery strikes uh, on, on, the, uh, on the battlefield. So um, the circumstances of me coming up with this game was basically that I was faffing around with a clothes peg a good few years ago and was like, let's actually make quite a nice uh, telegraph key. Uh, so rather than the game coming first and then coming up with the controller, it was the opposite way around. And, and from there, like I iterated on it, built a flash version, and then I've built this full-blown version now, seven years on. <laughs> uh, I've done a variety of uh, alt controls in the past. Uh, I've even been in alt, alt control GDC before with a game vaccination, which was very much ahead of its time. Yeah, uh, I love doing it. I also run workshops uh, for uh, building custom controllers with kids all the way up to pensioners. Thanks a lot, Alex. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Alexandra Ferriol. I'm a business development assistant and I'm also a student as I've got an apprenticeship with Ubisoft. So as part of my studies, I made an alternative control project, which is uh, Gambling Paradise. So Gambling Paradise, the escape room, is a game where you have to help your partner who is locked in a casino. Uh, he had done a heist and he wanted to avoid guards, uh, casino guards. So you have to give him advice and to indicate him the way out of the casino. Calling numbers, distracting the guards, and telling him where are the cameras so he can find his way out. I made this project uh, in a class with Tatiana, far with you. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting. And uh, the mechanic part of the project was something that I've never seen before. Uh, in a video game school or video game class or 
anything related, so it was very interesting. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. Thank you. My name is Blake Andrews. My name is Frank DeMarco. Uh, I'm a game designer, animator. I'm a game designer and programmer. Brought scrapeboard. Scrapeboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stand on the scrapeboard and you scrape it around the ground, and it's like a simple like color matching game. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Dance Dance Revolution with a skateboard uh, instead of using your feet. And um, yeah, you have to match the colors on the screen with the colors on the platform. Tony Hawk gave us a skateboard. It's true. And, it's true. Uh, it was going to be for like a fundraiser, and we're like, no, let's make like a controller out of this. And then we did a prototype, and we're like, oh, this is pretty fun. And then we just kept. Uh, some people really like it, so we kept making it. Um, I brought a game to All Control GDC in 2016 called Planet Liquor, and it is a game I made with three others. In the game, there's a 3D printed controller that looks like a gamepad, but the difference is that we put popsicles instead of buttons, and you would lick the popsicles to play like an arcade game. And I've made a bunch of other All Control games, but this is like the most involved. Um, one of the first ones I did, it was like an alt control game. Uh, there was like an award at a game jam for alt control, and I was like, what, what is that? Uh, I'll, I bet if I just put peanut butter all over my keyboard, that'll be an alt control. Oh, nice. So I like removed all the keys except for a couple, and then I just spread peanut butter all over the keyboard. I didn't really think about like the allergy thing, but no one died, so it's okay. <laughs> and then the second one, I was like, maybe someone could get hurt, so I put the keyboard in a bag which a bunch, with a bunch of thumbtacks. And uh, the, you were supposed to mash the, the keyboard, and it was in like a trash bag. And I would tell people, it's like, oh, there's a bunch of thumbtacks in there. And people were like, yeah, oh, okay. And they'd be like, shh, shh, shh. And yeah, people could get hurt uh, with that. Yeah, I think one that people really the, like is Guitar yeah, Mouse. The, oh, yeah, yeah, Guitar yeah. Mouse, yeah. There's, there's one. Um, we collaborated a little on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah It's yeah. like um, a music game. If someone else made the actual game, but I made the controller for it. Yeah. And basically, it's two mice, uh, one up here and one up here. You strum one, and then you hold the keys here, like a fret, and hit a bunch of keyboard keys on the floor to sing. I, I did a couple of remote things. One, The first one was for you, kind of, for a frog exhibition, and it was a live frog. So there was a frog in an aquarium, but it was in like a remote location and you would press a button and an LED would go off at the frog tank in the remote location. So it was like some uh, internet communication for that. And then I like expanded on that and I did like a, this was during the pandemic where everything had to be like hands off and remote. So we set up a robot that people could control over the internet. It was live streamed on Twitch and you could control the robot through the Twitch chat, and you could drive the robot. For a certain event, we had the robot had a claw, and it grabbed a hot dog that was hanging from a string, and it brought the hot dog over to a hot dog bun and made a hot dog. We also collaborated on uh, Tinder Gorilla. Right, But right. we didn't really, it wasn't really we right. made the controller, we just got the Donkey Kongas, yeah. and we set it up to Tinder. Yeah. And basically, if you wanted to swipe left or right you would just hit the congas yeah swiping left and right yeah. was made with a donkey con contro donkey conga controller yeah and it was it was fun to like try to get tinder to work with this other controller it wasn't meant for but uh countless countless alt control games yeah yeah thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> there's maybe more i was like uh, man i made a lot of these <laughs> stupid things was that too much yeah <laughs> Uh, my name is Danny Rankin. I'm a teaching professor at the University of Colorado at the Atlas Institute, and uh, I help run a lab called the What Lab. It's just an experimental game design and interaction laboratory. Today, um, I made Number Cruncher, which is a, basically a satirical uh, cryptocurrency mining game where you beat a monster until it poops out uh, currency using mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> So we have an experimental festival called the What Festival. 
that we wanted to make a fake currency for. So we came up with sort of a, a, a bizarre way to generate money with this thing called the number cruncher. And then we've just sort of been playing with this idea of like, if it feels like an educational game, but is also kind of gross and uncomfortable, what does that do for how players feel? And then does it make it fun to kind of interact with? But so far it seems like it's working out okay. Uh, no, actually I've made other alt control games. Um, Buy Sell, which is here, is one of ours. And then before that we had a game called uh, Busy Work, which is a, like an office simulator where you're, uh, we've done that. So Matt Bethencourt and I uh, work together on a lot of games. I'm usually the hardware designer and then he does a lot of the programming and together we, we run the lab and work at Atlas together, so. Great, thanks a lot, Danny. Of course, thank you. My name is Matt Bethencourt. I am the co-director of the What Lab at the Atlas Institute of CU Boulder. Um, I also run a private art and design firm called Mouse and the Billionaire. So the game is under all of those titles for GDC this year. The game I made is called Buy Sell. It is a imagination of what children think stock trading looks like. So using primary colors, players can trade pizza and candy and tacos and moms. Just trying to find, looking through crazy charts and trying to find when stocks are low and trying to sell them when they're high. Uh, using analog phones, so they dial in the numbers to get the stock that they want and then they scream buy or sell into the phone. So we've been making a lot of phone games for a while now. Um, I found a lot of old office phones on eBay and thought, oh, I, can, I bet I can make some games for those. And so have made a few alt control games with those. First one was called Busy Work, which won the Indicade Media Choice Award in 2017. So for that one, we're just like only reading the picking up and the putting down of the phones. Um, and then since we've been adding more and more functionality, so starting adding key presses and starting adding other things. And so for this one, we really wanted to add voice uh, that you're voice was part of it and so we wanted something to shout and so we were like what's a thing in which you shout I'm like oh the stock market is like a shouty thing and so just added that into it as well and um, yeah that's about it so it's not our first game I started in installation art and so I do a lot of sound based installation art and installation art experiences um, so less gamey but still very experiency and kind of moving into alt control from there I think the first game very specific game was probably busy work in 2017 but I also we have one called please hold that is a text adventure that uses a phone where you have to navigate a hold menu and then in 2019 I was here with hot swap which uh, came from the Atlas Institute where I teach and I did the sound design for that game thanks a lot Matthew yeah you're welcome my name is Diraj I am the, um, the CEO and founder of uh, QNero. So we're showing off our technology, which is a headset, and we're showing that off in a game called NeuroState Trainer. And uh, that essentially is um, basically we use, we measure different biometrics, uh, including your brainwave patterns, like your breathing rate and your heart rate. And we are training you to, like you fly a ship, so it's kind of fun and it's gamified and you move your head, you use your head to to, to move the ship through and navigate the ship through the track. And then you have to maintain yourself within uh, like these certain target states. So your heart rate has to be within a certain lower range and your breathing rate has to be controlled and your mental state is in the calm range. And then you unlock these speed levels. So it's somewhat paradoxical because the faster the ship goes, the more stressful it becomes. So it's kind of a training. It's a feedback training loop where you train yourself to be um, controlled under stress, you know. Um, so I come from the medical background, so we use the same tech in the operating room to basically have better outcomes during surgery. So we monitor these neurophysiological parameters during, the, during surgeries. And we use that information uh, in order to basically understand what's happening within the patient and their nervous system, the integrity of the nervous system, uh, because otherwise you don't know until the patient wakes up. So um, in the same way, we use the same signals, different you know, algorithms, but they're just as advanced using machine learning, AI, in order to come up with these different indexes like your cognitive workload and emotional states and engagement and attention and those types of things. And we use that all to come up with uh, things that you can use in a game situation. Yes, this is the first all control game. Cool. Thanks a lot, Dimash. Thank you. My name is uh, Greg. Um, I'm a student in game design uh, and I made uh, Derive 
Um, so Derive is a all controller game. The concept is pretty simple. It's two pirates on the same ship and you have to push the other out of the boat in the water in order to win. So it's a very fun and competitive game. The project started as a school project. Tatiana helped me uh, build our uh, amazing arcade game. And once we got the call from the GDC, we actually kept developing the game. We were just a team of four game designers at the beginning. And we actually hired a programmer and two game artists to make the game look better and feel better. So. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Isa, and I'm the programmer that they hired <laughs> to help with the game. Uh, I came uh, in the middle of the um, creation, the prediction. They basically had a prototype that um, they filled me up and they told me that this is what they wanted as a final product, but they wanted it to work. <laughs> so we had to remake a bit uh, some of the rules of the game and some of the basic mechanics and uh, they told me to redo it from scratch. Uh, I sort of reusing some of the prototype, but we had to start over everything. We had uh, like two whole months to make it ready for the GDC. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's my first um, real game. Um, I started at, uh, as a third year in my current school. So um, that's really my first experience with the video game industry. And yes, it is my first uh, Owl Control game and I am really looking forward to developing more if I have the opportunity in the future because I really liked it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jungu. I'm a creative technologist working in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. And I made a game called Color Crush for this All Control GDC 2022 sessions. Uh, it's a mashup between arcade basketball, uh, Connect Four, uh, and Candy Crush. So the way it works is that you need to line up three balls of the same color in a row, vertically, horizontally, and diagonal. And that's all you need to know to play the games. And the goal is to score as many points as you can before you run out of time. And there is a compete mode of this game as well. So if you're playing against your friend, uh, you can split into two teams and score differently. So that can also be a uh, very fun part of it. So this was a game originally developed uh, for a game exhibit that we were planning before the pandemic. But unfortunately, because of COVID, the exhibit didn't happen. So that's why I'm bringing it over here in GDC to bring it back to life and have it exposed to more audience so that I can uh, keep iterate on it and keep polishing uh, the game and make it into a better iteration and version. It is my first time to attend All Control or GDC whatsoever. Also, it's my first time to the West, uh, being here in the West Coast as well. So I'm really excited to see the All Control communities. I've been really uh, excited about creating games that features alternative controllers and embodied interaction or tangible interactions. And it's been a, a really rewarding journey for me to see what other uh, developers are creating and what are some of the other creative uh, gaming ideas that are floating around here on the floor. I feel a strong sense of belonging here in this uh, all control community. And I think I would really like to keep making more games like this, either for uh, in my day job, for our museums, or just as a side hobby to keep uh, pushing the boundaries of what uh, interfaces and interactions for a game could look like. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. My name is Michael Hurst. I'm a game developer by trade, but I have a lot of skills to accompany my design. So design's probably my best, with programming being my next best. This year I'm showing Algrab, the world's only animatronic fortune-telling crow. Uh, the game works in that you have to beat the crow at his own card game in order to earn your own fortune. And you do that by giving him some cards based off of a custom deck of 52 that I designed. And then you have to figure out whether he's lying about the value of that card or not. And you do that by answering if the real value is more than what he said, less than what he said, or what he actually said. And there is a trick behind the game. So if you want to earn your fortune, figuring out that trick is the secret. 
it started as a college project for a, an alt control class that I had. And I was really inspired by a phrase my professor said, which was haunt an object. The idea that you're imbuing life into something that normally doesn't. And so I was looking around for it, for something for me to haunt. I stumbled across this animatronic crow. And I was like, that's it. I know what I'm working on. And so then I spent several months trying to figure out what game to make and what to pull on from it. That crows are really associated with mystery, intrigue, mythology, even astrology. And so I ended up coalescing on fortune telling. And then I ended up spending another eight to ten months working on it to get the game just right to fit the mood and theme that I was looking for. It's my first one that I took all the way to completion. I made a couple other smaller games as part of the class. This is the first one that I've taken this far to a finished state. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, my, my name is Nino Quartz. And I'm Stefan Kraft. I'm a digital artist. I'm a game designer. Uh, we made a game called Teletext VRN1, WRN1. <laughs> The game is about the fictional television channel uh, WRN1, whose signal has disappeared and you have to go through the teletext and figure out, like, piece together information on what happened. The whole thing is a multilinear, like, choose-your-own-adventure style game. Uh, it's all about finding out the mystery of why the signal is gone. Uh, it was a student project three years ago. We, we sort of made that in like two, three months as part of a course about multilinear storytelling. At the Zurich University of the Arts. That's the one. <laughs> I think so, I guess. You could call it that, yeah. I mean, at least for me. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, yeah, probably. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Thank you. My name is Perry. I'm a senior in the Atlas program at CU Boulder, so I'd say I'm just a researcher right now. I made Tinycade, which is a collection of actually several games all in one. The concept is that Tinycade is a cardboard arcade platform for you to be able to play different games with unique alternative controllers. And because it's all made from cardboard, it's super simple and easy to make your own controllers and own games. We made it originally as a introduction into the world of fiducial markers, uh, basically like scanning QR codes. And from there, we took it towards the concept of making it affordable and accessible for people to access alternative controllers through these simple paper and cardboard materials. It is actually my second alt control game. The first time I taped the QR codes directly to my hand and that was a little inefficient, so we swapped over to the cardboard arcade format. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. My name is Ravant Verma. I am a part of Geeky Panda Studios and we worked on the game called Ready Set Haya. So the game is a pretty straightforward rhythm game, if you've played any rhythm games before. Um, the idea is that you as a player are supposed to imitate the actions that come on screen on a real-life kung fu wooden dummy controller. So if you guys have ever watched the Jackie Chan or Blue Sea movies where they train on like this kung fu wooden dummy, pretty much the same concept, but here in a game it has like a rhythm element to it. So there is a music track and then based on the beats you have to hit the things at the right time. This is our student project that we had as part of the University of Utah's program. We have a total of 10 developers that work on a time length of five months to create Ready, Set, Haya. We built this in 2019, and initially we wanted to try and showcase this at GDC 2020, but because of the COVID pandemic, we didn't get a chance. And so we, here we are at GDC 2022. It is our first all control game. It is part of a um, program project that we were given. Everyone within our program for a span of five months are supposed to work on a game that is focused on alt control. And so that's kind of how we got the idea to do an alt control game. Basically, everyone in our program were supposed to apply to GDC to make it a chance to try and showcase here. We were the only game that got selected. And so here we are, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. My name is Sasha and I'm a game design student. I make uh, Too Busy to Escape. The game is simple. It's a cooperative game where you have to uh, escape with another fugitive on the far west. So you have to reach the border and use different buttons to hide yourself or uh, change the direction of the rail. 
which is a game uh, I made during the Tatiana's class, so yours. So yes, this is my first uh, control game. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, my name is Yong Zhen Zhou. I'm a, well, I guess a game designer come student from National University of Singapore. I made Pastry Panic, which is a game about switching haptic controllers. The real focus behind the game was that I wanted people to have an experience that brought them outside of the screen to bring more emphasis onto the physical aspect in our control. So I've got these haptic sliders that all feel different and they'll need to do quite a bit of, quite a bit of the game is out in real life rather than within the screen. I did this as part of my, my year four thesis project in the National University of Singapore. I'm a design student there and for our thesis we can kind of do anything that we would like to do. So I, I like games, so I decided to make a game and bring it to Art Control GDC in here in San Francisco. Well, I guess I had a smaller project behind that could sort of be counted as Art Control, but this is my first kind of real alternative controller game. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. My name is Zaina Sheikh. Well, I'm a, a game design student right now at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm a senior, a fifth year senior, so I'm graduating in May. And I also work as a, a game design intern at a small games company in Boulder. I brought a Plinko Burger uh, to Alt Control here at GDC. It's a burger making simulator game, sort of, where you use a ketchup and mustard bottle to move like a bumper in the game. And then you also call out orders via like a drive-through headset. So it started out as a project inside of a class. So the format was part of a uh, alternative arcade interfaces class. And uh, the final project for that involved making some kind of inspired by redemption arcades, but not necessarily like has to be in that theme game. And uh, one other person and I ended up making this Plinko game uh, where you're serving up burgers. I guess my first out control game would have probably been one of the earlier projects in the class. So we had to start out by making an alternative controller for the game Pong, which is both a really easy game to make, just like it's very, really simple, and also uh, imagining alternative controls for a game that already exists is a good way to test the waters as far as, um, I don't know, thinking critically about what kinds of controls are interesting and how they're interacting with the, the game mechanics. Thanks a lot, Zaina. Yeah, thank you. There you have it. All the 15 All Control GDC 2022 games, as presented by their makers. The expo floor ran until Friday 3 p.m., and then everyone uninstalled quickly. If you'd like to see the trailers of most games selected for All Control GDC, I'll put the link in the description below alongside other resources as usual. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, take care and be playful.